So this evening, we want to be taking a look at the implications of Jamaica being removed from the PATEF gray list. Why is that such a big deal? And why um, should we care? I'm not sure if you want. I'm not sure if you wanted me to just get into why is it, or or, or actually just give some background for context. Um, I think so. I think a little context is important. So we're placed on the on the gray list, and the gray list really just means a jurisdiction with increased monitoring, and we're being monitored mainly because our organized criminal enterprises were using or predominantly using the sector, um, so the financial services sector, real estate sector, other subsectors to you know enhance their criminal um, enterprises. So with that, we're placed on we're placed on the gray list, and we're given some time to to add, to make some adjustments. Um, initially, we're placed on the gray list in 2020, and we just came off in June, in June 2024. So we'd have made some steps going forward um, up to December. So the December update, we're at 37 out of the 40 recommendations. Um, which was major at the time because we were moving at a faster pace than than many other other countries on the gray list. And now the fact that we're on that we're off the gray list in um, in June July this year, it is definitely something good for Jamaica and Jamaicans. Right. So, what are the economic implications for us now? So the economic implications that were off the gray list, or the or yes. or or the or the bullets that we dodged, because or both. I can give you a, a bit of both. So some of, so some of what we would have dodged, which is by which is by and large also some of the things that we potentially gain, is that countries on the gray list generally get reduced foreign direct investments. So now that we're off, it now gives us an opportunity. To gain more for to gain more foreign direct investments in any form. Um, the other the, the other one is the reduction in our actual swift swift payments. So some some a study was done a couple of years ago, um, looking at 2004 to 2014 data, which suggested that girlies countries saw a 10 percent reduction in. Um, swift payments and a 16% reduction in your cross-border payments. So to so to break that down a little bit is that wow. say for instance, say for instance, we're trying to do transactions with um con trying to do transactions with banks in the US, Swiss banks, banks in the European Union. Now that we're off, it's much easier for us to do to do those to do those transactions through the international payment system and FATF has not said to those organizations or countries to give Jamaica enhanced due diligence. So it would so it essentially means that we can make payments much faster. Um, I'm not sure if mm. persons remember, even, even, though, even though I'm not old enough to remember as well, that sometimes your international payments so for example, an international check might have taken almost a month to clear. And that is an year we're coming from. If we continue to improve within um, SWIFT system as well as other payment systems, we might be able to move down our settlement time for cross-border payments. And once we're able to, remo to move down our, our, our settlement time for cross-border payments, it means that it's much easier to do business with Jamaica, for Jamaicans to do business outside of Jamaica and for persons outside of Jamaica to do business in Jamaica. So those are some That's... of the main economic implications. And um, that benefits would be of very welcome indeed. Mm -hmm. That would be very, very welcome indeed. You mentioned some data. I didn't earlier. I didn't realize that this data existed. Can you just repeat that for me? You said that people or countries that were on the gray list experienced okay. fifteen percent decline in. Say it again for me. All right. So countries on the gray list um, saw two, roughly two percent of GDP reduction 
in foreign percent direct of GDP that's huge. Right. And country and countries that were on the blacklist is about five percent of GDP. For the mm. SWIFT payments, so the payment system, that's about ten percent reduction in SWIFT payments um, for countries on the grey list. But um, there wasn't any evidence from that from 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 that study that saw that there was a, that there was a reduction in the money leaving the country. And then the other one, which is the one you mentioned, is about sixteen percent reduction in cross-border flows in in the banking sector um, for countries that for countries that have been grey listed. So that 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 part that that part is probably more that part is probably more significant because if you're on uh, if you're on the grey list and you're on and you're under enhanced due diligence, then certain banks might not necessarily want to do business with you. And then some of those relationships that we might have had prior to 2020, prior to 2023, um, well, 2022 as well, some of those relationships would have changed with some of the, with, um, for example, us, we would have, um, we would have stopped doing certain business with, with particular banks. I'm not going to name any names. And um, that, that, that is something that would have happened right across the board because why do why why do the enhanced due diligence if you can just do business with another country that, or another bank that is not on on a gray list so mikhail says paypal can trust jamaica now does this have implications right. for us I, using I, platforms I'm, like paypal i am glad i'm glad mikhail went there because um there's actually one of the notes in terms of um, in terms of potential benefits on our side is that if we are if we don't have to go through the enhanced due diligence and the and the environment creates itself, then it is possible that it is possible that some of the international payment platforms might actually be able to trust the Jamaican banks. So if we can imagine if we can imagine a Jamaica where we have cash up sell paypal easily um as well as as well as other as well as other international payment payment platforms it would also allow us to do our foreign currency transactions much faster so if so that's potentially where we can go um regulators are gonna have to step in to see you know what kind of what kind of regulations are needed on that side? That's that, that's not a, that's not an area that I'm going to, that I'm going to try to touch on. But it's definitely something that is wide open for us in the in the cross border payments on an individual level. So Tavares was saying, never had issues with PayPal before. Tavares, I'm going to assume here that you've only been using PayPal to buy things and not also to sell things. So you've only been paying out via PayPal. It doesn't give a problem there. But when mm. you try to collect via PayPal in Jamaica, it's really hard because you need to have a US-based bank account in order to do that. Yes, they can pay you to your PayPal, but how do you get the PayPal funds into your Jamaican bank account? That's the difficulty that sellers have been experiencing with, so, with PayPal. I do remember one, I do remember one time, and this was even before I started at the bank, that um there was an option to connect PayPal accounts. I'm not sure what happened with that side. Uh, but you know, remove removal from the gray list might might make PayPal might make PayPal um for that, that specific example um a much easier process. Sean says, no longer will we have to stand in Western Union line. Please, God, do. Um, Implications for the remittance process? True, true. So on the so on the so on the remittance side, you do also have some options where so currently you have some options where where you're able to link where you're, we're able to link your Western Union, for example, a Western Union account to to a bank account, but it would but it would definitely make remittances is easier to get. So if it's the case that um, somebody who's sending funds might be able to send directly from their bank account to your bank account, that is definitely a, that's definitely somewhere I think we are going. We're not quite there yet, 
but that's but that's definitely something that I see happening. Mm, okay, I would hope so. So with these efforts that have been made to get us off the gray list, all the improvements, all the changes, are these things that, in your opinion, we can actually sustain? All right. Um, most mostly yes. There, there, there is there is there is a lot on our side. Um, so the banking sector side, in terms of in terms of ensuring that um, AML, um, so anti money laundering, counter financing terrorism, and proceeds of crime are um, are consistently maintained. Uh, the BOJ has made further steps in terms of in terms of their KYC know your customer requirements, so it would be easier to conduct business. So it so it's just to ensure that the the local system remains safe, and the regulations and the regulations remain safe. Uh, we are heavily regulated in that area, so I don't I don't necessarily see any well I wouldn't say any issues, but I don't necessarily see many issues many issues arising from there. Mm. Um, there, there, there is one opportunity that 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 I want to mention though. Um, so another country that that came off the that came off the FATF that came off the FATF gray list this year was the United Arab Emirates, and one of the things coming out of Dubai in particular is that being on the gray list, they saw a reduction in real estate development coming off of the gray list. Just a couple of months ago, there has been new life into their real estate market. And this is my personal opinion now. I do think that Jamaica is particularly right for innovative real estate. Um, innovative real estate. So for what example, would be innovative real estate to you? Mixed, mixed you mixed use, mixed use high rises. So not the um, not the same old luxury not, luxury apartments everywhere. Not the same old luxury apartment, but you but but you can pretty much create create communities when you build those towers. So you so um you you would have seen some of the examples, for example, the the New Brunswick development in 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 Spanish Town. It was scattered it was scattered across more land era i guess because they had land to do it but say for instance you're trying to do one of those developments in kingston it might be the case that you might have to go up 15 15 16 floors but you wouldn't have but you wouldn't have housing on maybe floors one to four you probably have businesses you would have commercial you could have commercial offices um other added services daycare Doctor, um, doctor services, pharmacies, and so on. Uh, supermarket, supermarket integrated as well as well as above ground parking. So those those are definitely some trends that I think Jamaica could potentially benefit from, um, especially having seen them in in other countries. I've seen some examples um, in Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, as well as some examples in Panama. So before you go, Nicole, a little housekeeping for NCB. Uh, one, I said that you guys reopened the bond or it's a new bond. I know you're not prepared to talk about that, but I just wanted to mention it because I mentioned it on a different thing earlier this week mm -hmm. or last week, I think. And then two, when it comes to the burial relief funds, uh, NCB has also been involved in trying to make a difference there. Okay, so, um, I'll, so I'll touch on, so I'm going to touch on both, but I'll touch on the I'll touch on the building building a better Jamaica fund is the name which was um, our our effort for burial relief. So so far as of last week, we would have matched our initial goal. So we would have gotten 150 million from um, general public, businesses, individuals, and we matched that. So we do so we did get up to the initial goal of 300 million and funds have already been mobilized for the for the fund particularly in the particularly in the most affected parishes um from mem from memory i know i know that funds have been dispersed particularly in southern saint elizabeth for roof assistance as well as in terms of purchasing generous there's one generator that 
um, was publicized, purchased for water distribution. One community, and I think we're trying to do a couple more to ensure that to ensure that those those communities, particularly in the southern Saint Elizabeth, can get um, water access. So that's the building a better Jamaica fund. Um, on the on on the bond side, it's really a continuation of this. It's really a continuation of the strategy that that you would have heard from both um, Rob and uh, Mr. Leachin earlier in the year in terms of we are in terms of we're trying to re re optimize particularly through through our through our new push with efficiency um, governance and and customer experience and especially on the efficiency side there is some recalibration of the books particularly 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 looking at reducing debt on that side if we're you know able to reduce our debt we would be better able to increase you know profit margins and particularly um particularly dividends particularly dividends so it would definitely help to reduce our operating expenses which is particularly the move but but why bonds um the bond market based on the interest rate is is still right the interest rates are the interest rates are still particularly attractive um i think there are there are three tranches for investors to potentially invest in and um this one um I don't want anybody at work to crucify me no but uh the the, the bond for for now is expected to do much better than our equity position so that's so that in my estimate, we can they can hardly crucify you for that i mean that's just a fact right now based on where the stock is <laughs> right um so, so 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 based on all those factors we so, so we're seeing that there are still opportunities in the bond market and we're going for it so i encourage persons who have who, who have who have the who have the tenacity to invest to invest okay and then sean has a, a positive note for you sean oh wrong comment Sean said, went to Mandeville NCB the other day and was pleasantly surprised with how quickly I got through with customer service. So good job there. So, so we are definitely trying on, we're, we're definitely trying to improve our customer experience, not, not just customer service on all fronts. And we do, uh, and we do consistently welcome oh. your feedback. Uh, and Donovan backing him up saying you're so right. Their customer service is excellent. Okay. That's some good yeah. news because uh, in the you, past right? year, I have not heard two consecutive Excellent. positive comments <laughs> about customer service. So, so it's great that we have these two people here to testify about their recent experience. I'm glad to see it. So on that note, thank you so much, Nicole. Always great thank having you. you. Thank you for having me back.